In November 2014, Holocaust survivor Gabby Held spoke at Wagner College to students about his tragic experiences in Nazi-occupied Europe. <laughs> Gabby Held of Staten Island, New York, a U.S. Navy veteran and retired boxer, recalls positive memories as a young boy in a small town in Hungary before the war. I remember my parents, I remember my brothers, and all the life which was doing on this little town. In Gabby's small town of Fugid, just next to the city of Salnuk in central Hungary, east of Budapest, local Jewish families thrived. And in a spare time, I helped my mother in the grocery store to sell stuff. I was always very helpful with my uh, parents. During breaks from school, eight-year-old Gabby enjoyed playing sports, especially soccer. My mother always told us, how come you play so much soccer and you never get tired? But life wasn't always easy for young Gabby Held, as he began to deal with rising anti-Semitism in Europe. Uh, I was beating up a few times. They were beating us up. And uh, I remember one accident that uh, they were tying us up under the, uh, behind the bicycle, and we had to run as he was driving. On the night of November 9th, 1938, or what is often referred to as Kristallnacht, or the Night of Broken Glass, Nazi party officials targeted Jewish communities in Germany, causing the destruction of many Jewish businesses and homes. Broke many times, they broke our windows during the night, you know, kids just from spite throw a rock into the window and they broke the windows. Or they spilled some paint on the, on the house. But we had no choice, we had to be quiet. Within a year, Europe was at war and Hungary joins Nazi Germany in the Axis Alliance. Nazi persecution, race laws and violence would eventually impact Jews in Hungary. Hungarian police would later take Gabi Held's father, Abraham. They came to our house and they just told us about they give you five minutes, pack whatever you can. Pack your belonging and uh, and we just had to get out of the house. My father wasn't there because my, they, my, they took my father earlier to a, uh, they took him to a working camp. And we never knew about, we never heard about my father since then. With the end of the Axis Alliance, Hungarian Jews faced a much greater danger as they suddenly fell directly into the hands of the Gestapo. In 1944, the German occupation of Hungary triggers mass deportations to Auschwitz. After being confined first in a ghetto and then forced to work on a farm, Gabi and his mother and two brothers were deported to Bergen-Belsen in Germany. We didn't know what is this. I thought it's factories because we saw big chimney. So we thought maybe they gonna go to another place to work. And later on they gave us uh, like a, it wasn't a chain, it was like a piece of rope with a number. So we were no more human. We were all in numbers. No names, all in numbers. While under poor treatment within the camp, Many people died of malnutrition. During his time there, Gabby helped his mother overcome stomach typhus. I had a, had a jar, I don't know from where, a small jar, and I boiled a little water, no salt, no spices, and I put a little schmaltz in it. And my mother was laying in the bed. She was like unconscious. And I poured, poured the liquid in her mouth. I don't know for how many days. After many months of hardship in Bergen-Belsen, Americans liberate Gabby Held, his mother, and his two brothers. Of the 825,000 Jews in Hungary before the war, less than one-third survived the Holocaust. After the war, Gabby took up boxing and became one of Hungary's boxing champions before leaving to go to Israel, and then later joined the U.S. Navy. And this is another picture, it's another game. 
It looks like I'm the winner because the referee is picking up my hand. <laughs> it's a good feeling though, even though it was a long time ago. Today, through archival videos from the Shoah Foundation and programs like those of the Wagner College Holocaust Center, students can engage with Gabby's tragic experience and the events of the Holocaust. I think what I'd want the kids to take away is um, the fact that he's completely broken, you know, at some points. Um, in his interview, and when he spoke to the kids, he cried every time. And I think I'd want the students to say, you know, they're looking at him like their grandfather or their, maybe their dad. Um, I'm hoping that they'd say, how could someone hurt someone so much age 13, my age, that they're an adult and they have a hard time confronting what they've been through.